Hare Krishna. This is a letter I was asked to write. Along, other GBCs were also asked to write letters uh, to the disciples of Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Dear disciples, followers, and friends of Bhakti Charu Maharaj, we could stop. I offer my respectful obeisances unto His Divine unto His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj, who is very dear to Lord Krishna having taken shelter at his lotus feet. These are the pranam mantras for Bhakti Charmaraj. I offer my obeisances unto the lotus feet of his holiness Bhakti Charu Swami, who is very soft-hearted and expert at compiling devotional literatures. He eloquently speaks the pastimes of Lord Krishna. His heart is full of the mellows of devotional service, and his life and soul is Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. What follows are a few meditations on the departure of Bhakti Charu Maharaj. We have all been deeply affected by this sad event, and that is testimony to the power of his exemplary life and association. Let me begin by mentioning a few of his qualities that come to mind. Although a powerful and influential person, he was always humble, easily approachable, and friendly to all. He was a strong and consistent voice for how we all need to respect and cooperate with each other. At the same time, he could be like a lion when it came to protecting ISKCON, the system of governance that Srila Prabhupada put in place, and Srila Prabhupada's mood and teachings. I was so proud of him, reassured and inspired, when we were able to see him in this lion-like mood. One of his qualities, I hear mentioned again and again, is how he was always a gentleman. Srila Prabhupada said that this is a symptom of an advanced devotee. He embodied sweet, loving Vaishnav exchanges. He was a refined person, expert at bhajans, drama, philosophy, and of course cooking. He was so happy when he could cook for the devotees, personally serving the prasadam, and sing to it that each guest was filled, the, filled to the neck with their favorite dish. Others have narrated how Bhakti Charmaraj arrived as a young devotee, new to Iskhan, and Srila Prabhupada quickly raised him to Brahman initiation, sannyas, and to serving as Srila Prabhupada's personal secretary and servant. Tamal Krishnamaraj told me that he asked Srila Prabhupada at the time, why have you brought this new devotee up so quickly? Prabhupada replied, I can see purity, you cannot. We hear the question, why did he have to leave now? In reply, we know from Shastra that pure devotees are under the divine energy of the Supreme Lord. My conviction is that Srila Prabhupada needed him, and therefore he called Bhakti Chara Maharaj to his side. We hear the question, but why did he leave due to COVID? We should first note that Bhakti Charamash left this world by Krishna's arrangement on Guru Purnima, the disappearance day of Srila Sanatana Goswami. This is most auspicious and not by chance. Srila Prabhupada gives the analogy that, that quote, the housewife teaches the daughter-in-law by teaching the daughter, end quote. Srila Prabhupada explains that sometimes devotees are put into suffering so that the rest of the world can learn a good lesson. Devotee's internal meditation on the lotus feet, on, Krishna, on Lord Krishna's lotus feet, is not broken, and the conditioned souls learn by seeing the devotee's example. All we have to do is think of the struggles of the Pandavas, Kunti Dev, Draupadi, Prahlad Maharaj, as well as Srila Prabhupada's several heart attacks while coming to the West and starting Iskhan. Because these exalted souls were put into difficulty by the arrangement of the Lord, we have their examples to learn from. I am convinced that Bhakti Charamash left this world as he did in order to make the rest of the devotees see this horrible disease as the great threat that it is. It took Bhakti Charamaraj. Here you go, Vinda. 
It took Bhakti Charamarja's experience with COVID to wake us all up, and I believe that was Krishna's arrangement and purpose. Just as a sidelight, I was thinking that you know Bhakti Charamarja loved to serve the devotees. He gave his whole life to serving the devotees. And I think it is exemplary and on one hand appropriate that he gave his life to warn the devotees about this disease. His last act was a service to the devotees. So as he lived and frankly as he died was service to the devotees. Krishna accomplishes many purposes with one act. That is often the style of his leela. As Ranchor, his leaving the battlefield was to deliver Rukmini, shame Jarasandha, kill Kalyavana, and to deliver Muchukunda. We can see the same in the departure of Bhakti Charamaraj. That is to say, several purposes accomplished by one, by one act. Krishna took Bhakti Charamaraj as he did because Srila Prabhupada needed him and to serve as a severe warning about COVID to the rest of us. We can also see that Krishna confirmed Bhakti Charamarsha's exalted spiritual status by taking him on Guru Purnima, Srila Sanatana Goswami's disappearance day. I remember the wave of grief that washed over me when I heard that Srila Prabhupada had left this world. One element of that grief was the fear that Srila Prabhupada might gradually fade into the background of my life. I can reassure you that from my own experience, the opposite will happen. For those who sincerely follow Bhakti Charmaja's instructions and example, you will find your relationship with him becoming sweeter and deeper with every passing year. Rather than fading away, he will become your constant guide and companion. Srila Prabhupada confirms this in his closing words upon completing the translation of and commentary on the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prabhupada's quoting now. This is Prabhupada's end notes to the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Although according to material vision, his divine grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, passed away from this material world on the last day of December 1936. I still consider his divine grace to always be present with me by his vani, his words. There are two ways of association, by vani and by vapu. Vani means words and vapu means physical presence. Physical presence is sometimes appreciable and sometimes not. But vani continues to exist eternally. Therefore, you must take advantage of the vani, not the physical presence. I think that his divine grace, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, is always seeing my activities and guiding me within my heart by his words. As it is said in Srimad Bhagavatam, Teni Brahma Hridai Adhikavaye, spiritual inspiration comes from within the heart, wherein the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his Paramatma feature is always sitting with all of his devotees and associates. Certainly his divine grace, if his divine grace were physically present, this this physically present at this time, it would have been a great occasion for jubilation. But even though he's not physically present, I am confident that he is very much pleased by this work of translation. End quote. The vacuum left by Bhakti Charamarja's departure is immense, and that is how it should be. These feelings of separation are the proper testimony to Bhakti Charamarja's life, so exemplary, so well lived. What more can we say? He was a Vaikuntha man, a saintly Vaishnav and surrendered servant of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada. The best way to find solace in his separation is to absorb ourselves in following his instructions, to always, to, to always listen to his talks and kirtans, and to redouble our efforts to serve his mission, to serve the mission that Bhakti Charamash gave his every breath to Srila Prabhupada's Iskan. His Holiness Bhakti Charamaraj Kijai, your grieving servant, Bhadran Rain Swami. So, whoever's Dravida Prabhu, you want to go next?
Thank you, Maharaj. That was very moving and eloquent. Hare Krishna. Namaham Vishnu Badaya Krishna Bastaya Bhutade Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharane Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pastada Deshitani. The Mahon Vishnu Padaya Krishna Besaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Charu Swaman Iti Namine Snigda Cheta Supraneta Vagminam Charasaprutam Pavuparakata Prana Naomi Bhakti Charupadam. That's the Sanskrit for the You already read the English. So being kind of a uh, recluse in my service, uh, I didn't travel that much. I had some uh, personal association with Bhakti Charu Swami over the years. Um, and I'd like to recall some of those uh, wonderful exchanges. I first met him in 1979, I think it was, when he first came to America. He came first to L.A. and then he came to New York. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. His whole personality was sweet was it accom- accommodating, friendly. He knew me from what? From Back to Godhead magazine editor, you know, he knew something. And uh, we shared something that I had, because I had uh, memorized the Nityanandashtaka, you know, this wonderful pr- prayer to uh, Lord Nityananda by Vrindavan Das Thakur. And uh, he knew that by heart. And so we, ch- we chanted that together. And uh, I later saw him, you know, and it was a very warm exchange. And this, this feeling, that, you know, that he's a genuine friend. As soon as you meet him, he was uh, concerned how you're doing, and he was, uh, you know, who was I? I was a little small timer, you know. But he gave you that feeling. And I remember subsequently, uh, my most memorable exchange was later in, in, in 1991 or 92, I forget, I was on... Uh, uh, the Parakram, the Navadvip Mandal Parakram. And uh, by that time, I'd made some of these tapes. And he, uh, maybe they got around, but it was known that I was really into this tambura and doing bhajan, you know. And he arranged in Mayapur for me to have a tambura while I was there. <laughs> <laughs> and I would carry it here and there, you know. And I would, like but, the yeah. And that was such a, you know, I mean, it, 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 there's no way else I would get a tambour. And it was such a, such a wonderful, heartwarming uh, gesture that he made there. And, uh, but mostly I, you know, I, I would see him in Mayapur and hear incredibly learned exchanges when he was relating the past times of Bhakti Siddhanta. He would just pour out all these details and the, the mood, you know. And it was obviously steeped in, these, in the Shastra and the lives of, of our Acharyas. And it was very impressive. And, uh, and then I heard about his, his project in Ujjain. And uh, I said, well, this is pretty ambitious to take. You might start a whole project there. And I, you know, I read about it, how he had organized the, the, the senior you know, people in the community, those who could help fund it and whatever. You know. And within less than a year, he was able to raise that project up, which was just very impressive, you know, his, his influence. And really what, what, what he was doing was uh, just what Srila Prabhupada did, by not just his words, but his personality. He was able to uh, attract people to want to serve, from high and low, from the lowest standard to the, to the high. You know, people who had money and people who were just wanting to, you know, join the movement and whatever. And that, that uh, is really the the, the essence is exactly following in Prabhupada's line there. Where Prabhupada, he, he was the perfect exemplar, he had the mantra, he was doing these teachings. Um, but it was, it, it was this mood and this feeling that tr- attracted so many people to listen to him. And you know, in this way, the movement ex- grew and exp- ex- exploded. Uh, I really learned about him when I worked on his biography. Uh, the, I say the biography, The Ocean of Mercy which has a lot of biographical material. And before I forget, I wanted to announce, I called Archita to and asked if we could ask Sovas if we could make that book available p- through PDF for free download. And so in the next day, th- th- I tried to, I, I looked on Amazon, you can't buy it. It's, it's completely, you know, it, 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 there's one copy for $150, you know, you can't get it. So we're going to print some more, but uh, that'll take time. But, but today, tomorrow, and in the future, anyone can download that book for free on PDF and read it. It's a remarkable book. 
I learned about his early life there. Some of you, maybe many, many of you haven't read it. And uh, how he was a, uh, born into a wealthy family, I think in Calcutta. And uh, his father was a movie producer. He picked up that when he did that by Charan series. This is another wonderful gift he gave after Papa's disappearance. Uh, but his father was always working, you know, was, and, and his, his mother, you know, was there, but then she, she fell sick with tuberculosis. And he was just a child, five, five years old. He didn't know what was going on. But, uh, and his mother passed away from tuberculosis at an early age. And he describes it in all wonderful detail, just like a novel, you know, how devastating it was for him. And then it devastated his father. His father felt because he was always out working and everything that he was responsible. And suddenly he was, was a well-to-do family. He saw that had two cars and he found that uh, there was poverty, you know, so he had to take shelter of an aunt, you know, who, raised, who helped raise him and so forth. And uh, he describes it there that he and his friend, who later became Sarva Bhavana, his close friend, uh, they wanted to go to the West, you know, and explore. Whereas so many at the time, the, the, the Westerners wanted to come to the East and come and see India. And he was ready to go to the West. And they, 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 they uh, went on this uh, trek. They said, well, we're not going to fly. We're going to hitchhike. And so they went. They went to a, a, into Iraq, you know, and, and Turkey. And wherever they went, they were greeted you know, his personality was there. They, 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 were, they were fed. They were, the people invited him into their homes. You know, and they were, they, they were able to finally make it up to uh, Germany. He had a, an aunt who was German, and there was a connection there. And he ended up attending college there in Germany. Uh, and he, you know, he was from a Vaishnava family, but he w it wasn't the most prominent influence in his life at that, at that point. Uh, but then what happened was that in one of the gatherings that he had of his classmates and stuff, there was one guy who was saying, well, how many people have starved today in India, you know, like that. And he started defending uh, India, and try, but he realized he didn't really know that much about uh, the spiritual culture. And so that inspired him to go back to India and search out. And he I, I, all the, I forget all the details, but you can read it and download the book. And he eventually became attracted to this hugging guru, Ananda Maya, Mai. Remember? She, she was around it then. She must have been very young. This is in the uh, early 70s, mid 70s. And uh, he finally had a personal meeting with her, and she said, No, I'm not your guru. Your guru is elsewhere. You know? He was ready to. <laughs> oh, this is a different one? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. But, uh, and so he, you know, he took that, story. that was, you know, he sent him on his way. And eventually, it's very moving how he, his, his friend, so, you know, Sarva Bhavana, he met him in, in Calcutta again, and he'd become a devotee already. And he describes in this, this wonderful book how he was, he, was, he was changed, you know. He was very calm, he was effulgent, and he was committed, you know. And, and he asked uh, Sarva Bhavana, are you really committed? He said, yes, yes. No, no, no. This is this is Sarva Bhavana, the translator, his his friend. Yeah. And uh, and so this really piqued his interest. Well, if he's into it, then I want to get. It. So he visited the Calcutta temple, and met some. One of the devotees he met was Kundali. He was impressed with, <laughs> and Anurdesh Vapu, who I, I uh, that's, oh, that's Vidya Purana. So he gave class. He was very Im impressed with his class, and he wanted to. Uh, get the book, the Bhagavad Gita. And somehow they didn't have one there. But so he said, well, any book you have, Nectar of Devotion. He started reading the Nectar of Devotion. He said, oh, this is what I've been looking for. He couldn't stop. He read it day and night till he finished, you know. And then he went to the temple and uh, he moved in. He became a devotee there in Calcutta. And eventually, you know, quickly, of course, there's so much. Uh, then comes his meeting with Prabhupada. You know, actually, he, he, he was just a new devotee, so he didn't directly meet Prabhupada. But uh, when uh, the, the, the one of the main turning points was when Prabhupada met him, and he, uh, just like with Bhakti Siddhanta, he said to, to, to Prabhupada when he first met Bhakti Siddhanta, you should preach all over the world, you know, and Prabhupada was taken aback, and there was this little discussion back in 22. So Prabhupada said, oh, 
And you could, you could immediately see he's cultured, he's educated, he's, English is impeccable, you know. You should translate my books into Bengali. And he took that as life and soul. And by, by really accepting that and working that, he had access to Prabhupada, asking all kinds of questions. And as, as was mentioned, he, Prabhupada saw, you know, his, his uh, purity and he quickly gave him initiation, first and second, and then sannyas within a few months, which is very unusual. Anyway, there's so much, there many wonderful accounts there. Uh, the Kumbh Mela from Prabhupada in 77, and he went along with them, and then Prabhupada had to leave the Kumbh Mela, it was too noisy, he couldn't translate, and he was one of the few devotees who was invited on the train to come and, and join him, you know, and go back to, I forget where his next destination was, and then in Rishikesh, and, and of course the accounts of, you know, his, his uh, intimate association and service to Prabhupada during his uh, last uh, year, last few months, that's all. So, uh, I, what I'd like to do, if it's, if, with your permission, Maharaj, is a little out of order, but he wrote a, such a beautiful offering, Vyasa Puja offering, that I'd like to read that, if it's okay. Um, uh, Okay, so this is his offering for this year's Vyasa Puja offering. And he mentions the pandemic. He what? The pandemic, because he wrote it after it, you know, the, sh the lockdown. Dear Srila Prabhupada, please accept my most humble obeisances unto your divine lotus feet. As I am trying to compose my Vyasa Puja offering, I cannot help but reflect on the world's situation today. The whole world is in the grip of intense fear caused by a pandemic, and practically everything has come to a standstill. The whole of India is on lockdown, and no one is allowed to go out of his house. For the first time in history, all the places of worship, the temples, the mosques, the churches, and the synagogues have been shut down. No one could have ever imagined such a situation would arise. Nevertheless, I can see the foresight of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, knowing that such a situ situation would arise when no one would be able to go to the temple to see the deities of the Lord and worship him, he gave us the process of chanting his holy name. At a time like this, I also wonder whether this is his divine arrangement to force this world to surrender unto him and accept the process of congregational chanting. After all, he sent you to fulfill his prediction, and very systematically, you have made all the arrangements by creating the institution of ISKCON and training an army of dedicated devotees worldwide, an army that is marching forward, equipped with the most powerful weapons of your books to defeat the misdirected atheistic civilization of this world. On this auspicious day of your Vyas Puja, please bless us so that we can become valiant warriors in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's army and fight against the enemy that has vitiated the whole world with sinful activities. Please lead us as our glorious general to lay siege to meat-eating, intoxication, illicit sex, and gambling. Under your divine leadership, we are confident that victory will be ours, that we will defeat the eternal enemy of this world, which corrupts everyone's mind with the poison of atheism. Once again, under your expert guidance, let us establish the kingdom of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in this world. When we have a pure devotee like you to lead us and the Supreme Personality of Godhead with us, then who can ever doubt our victory? Who can ever doubt that the ominous influence of Kali will be defeated and that absolute peace and ultimate prosperity will prevail again, bringing the spiritual world down to this beautiful planet of ours? Your humble servant, eternally, Bhakti Charu Swami. Hare Krishna. Srila Bhakti Charu Swami Ki Jai. So it's interesting that you say that, Mars, that uh, he continued his service by letting us know how serious this COVID-19 is, because the day that, we, that this happened, Damara Kumar and myself, we were going to go out on book distribution. But when we heard this, I just thought, 
taking it much more seriously. I'm going to just, I'm going to wait until this lockdown is over. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a very serious thing. So yeah, he he's still serving the society by this. So he, uh, of course, it, it's been mentioned so much that he is a perfect gentleman. In the early 80s, he used to give a lot of seminars on etiquette because he grew up, as we heard, in, in a Vaishnava uh, family. So he was very, uh, uh, he knew a lot about etiquette. And us Westerners, we, <laughs> we didn't know anything. So he was really helping us in, uh, in that uh, area. Um, he was also into, into book distribution. He, uh, I recently heard a lecture where he was saying how the relationship that the living entity has with Krishna's friend or parental or conjugal relationship is very high. But higher than that is to go out and help others establish their relationship with Krishna. And that's stated in the, in the Srimad Bhagavatam also. That uh, devotees of the Lord, they derive great, great happiness in hearing the pastimes of Krishna. But those persons who are going out, what is that? Tavakatam ritam tapta jivanam kavirbhidam kamasapnam shavanamangalam shimadatam bhuvigurantane bhuridajana. Do you have that in poem, Javita? <laughs> you should have that. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so the gopis are saying there that, that, that those persons who are going out and spreading the message of Krishna, they are the most munificent. So he also, he inspired the devotees there in Ujjain to distribute books. He, he invited me to, to go there also and, and talk to the devotees about book distribution. And they're, they're actually, they have a good, good sankirtan party there. One time he, uh, during that Abhay Charan film, he, he asked me to be one of the actors in the <laughs> He wanted to be uh, one of the officers, the, one of the British officers. <laughs> but we, we found out I'm not an actor. <laughs> Except for I'm trying to be a devotee. I'm, I'm acting on that one. <laughs> but he, we, we were, yeah, he was a little disappointed. I, I'm not an actor. <laughs> But it was an interesting uh, attempt. So he was uh, seeing how some some of his godbrothers were kind of going in the retirement phase. But then he was thinking, oh, this movement started at the age of 70. Prabhupada was 70 when the movement started. And already devotees are thinking of retiring. I say Prabhupada, when, in that area when Prabhupada was leaving in, in 77, he told the devotees, you know, Tamil Krishna Maharaj and, 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 and Bhakti Choro Maharaj and others there, that, yeah, you serve Krishna throughout your life and then you could come here to Vrindavan and, and, and you can retire. And Tamil Krishna Maharaj said, well, Prabhupada, you, you never did that. So I said, yeah. <laughs> so he said, yeah, we're going to also, we're just going to, and, and Bhakti Charas told me he had that, that mood, just, just kept on, he kept on uh, preaching. And that's why he, he came. He wanted to continue. So many projects, you know, in, in, in Australia, they're building a big temple in Sydney. And he was the main person uh, collecting you know, inspiring people to give donations for this big temple in in, uh, in Sydney. He's not a GBC there or anything. He's just he just he likes to help temples like anything and projects. This uh, the uh, cow ministry or the he helps that a lot. He helps in so many ways. He's just helping. What? Alachua Temple also. Yeah. He just he just he just likes to help. Projects and temples and devotees and and I think it was 1996, Prabhupada's uh, centennial, where he he was the person that was behind going out to Prabhupada disciples that had kind of drifted away for whatever reason, bringing them back, and one of those was Shruti Kirti. 
And he's very, very, uh, I heard a lecture recently by Shu Security, he's very, very grateful that he started that whole movement of bringing, because that he was one of them, <laughs> that kind of. He's now our regional secretary for the Hawaiian Islands. Right, right. And he's, he's doing so much preaching, reminding devotees of Prabhupada, and he's, he's just like, he's really dynamic. So that was Bhakti Charo's time. And so many other Prabhupada disciples, they came back by that uh, desire to bring. And, and, and Sruti Kirti mentioned that one of the things that was going to come up was that he wanted all the Prabhupada disciples to come together, just like they have this, uh, this, uh, Nam, or this, this festival in North Carolina, what do they call that? Sadhu Sangha. He wanted to, to gather all the Prabhupada disciples together. Maybe, I don't know if it's that place, but, but all together somewhere. And he knew it's going to be expensive. He said, I'll put, I'll put in the first $100,000. <laughs> he was, he was going to give $100,000. <laughs> that was the first thing that would be very expensive, you know, to get all the Prabhupada disciples together. You know, so. so he was uh, another project that he was involved in. So, yeah, we're very fortunate to, to have had his association and as Bhakti Nod Thakur says, he reasons ill, who say that Vaisnavas die while still living in sound. The Vaisnavas die to live, and living spread the holy name around. It, still, there's like hundreds and hundreds of his lectures on, on Desire Tree. I was looking, I was listening to some of the lectures yesterday. He's like, wonderful, wonderful. So this is one of the uh, opulences we have with this, with the, with our technology, and you can hear these lectures on and on and on. So. Yeah. I didn't get much of association with him. I, I first time met him in uh, sometime in the early 80s. But he was uh, he was famous <laughs> within a short time he was very famous. Yeah. When you become a good devotee, you know that fame follows like a shadow. So he was very just like with Prabhupada, he became very popular with his, Prabhupada was so pleased with him. So you please Prabhupada, then everybody's, <laughs> everybody's like, whoa, this is a special door. I think he might be the only one that got first, second, then sannyas within a year. I don't know if anybody else. So it's a very, very special soul. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Om Gyanat Vedanta Sya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshulan Malita Menat Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha So within the um, Chaitanya Charitabrita there's a verse that uh, I'm sure everybody's heard many times Sadhu Sangha Sadhu Sangha Sarva Shastra Khoi Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhi Hoy that just by a moment's association with a with a devotee one could become uh, perfect and of course um, devotees ask Prabhupada about that. Okay, well, how how is that? But Prabhupada also gave a um, he gave an example that it's it, it's a rep receptivity of the the person, and probably gave the example of grass. So you have grass, which you have wet grass, which is like somebody's consciousness in the mode of ignorance. You have grass, which is like con someone's consciousness in the mode of passion. And you have straw, which is like somebody's conscious in the mode of goodness. So to light wet grass is very difficult. To ignite somebody's Christian conscious in the mode of ignorance is very difficult. Passion a little easier. And mode of goodness, which is like straw, uh, ignites <coughs> very easily. So... Um, so, our, so our ability to, you could say... Uh, gain or the full benefit of our association with with Vaishnavas is, is based on our on our conscience our, re our receptivity um, and and sometimes devotees uh, lament that oh well I wish I wish I would have taken more advantage or wish I would have extended myself um, more 
to personalities who have left, like such as Bhakti Chu Swami. Some devotees are probably lamenting around the world. I wish I would have extended myself more. Disciples, friends, followers. And this particular lamentation, you could say is good, is natural. Um, but it's also, you could say, you know, it creates a lot of, a lot of, a lot of pain. Like, for example, in the, also in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it says, um, you know, Lord Chaitanya speaking with Ramananda Roy, what's the greatest pain? What's the greatest gain? Greatest gain is association with Vaishnavas. Greatest pain is separation from them. So, um, so sometimes, again, yeah, people uh, lament that, oh, I, 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 I've taken the association of the devotees for granted. I, I should have um, taken more of their association. And I have some experience with this. I was, my first book I got was from this devotee, Radhanath Prabhu. And uh, he was in L.A., then he moved to San Diego, and he was here, and he would, he would tell me sometimes, oh, that, you know, let's, we'll get together. You could come over to my house. It was right across the street. His house was right across the street. We'll, we'll, we'll get together, and we'll, and we'll watch uh, memories of Prabhupada, you know, the disciples telling memories. I think, yeah, maybe Siddhanta Prabhu put that together. And then I would just say, okay, well, you know, we'll get to, uh, you know, tomorrow. yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow, pr- you know, tomorrow, tomorrow. Procrastination is a thief of time. Um, and I went over there a few times. And specifically, I went over there once. We read Chaitanya tried to meet together. But I definitely could have went over there a lot more than I did. And I didn't. <laughs> And then, you know, some years fast forward, and then he passes away. And then I was up in L.A., and uh, there's this devotee there. I think it, his name's Nursing Nursinga Nursinga Nanda, yeah. What is it? No, no, sorry. Oh, the restaurant one. Restaurant one, yeah, Nursinga, yeah. He was his personal helper, uh, Radhanath Prabhu. So... I asked her, saying, I said, um, do you, like, have anything of Radhanath Prabhu's? Like, you know, I don't know, something that he left you, you know, that I could have. You know, because I, you know, he gave me my first book. And, I was and then he said, okay, yeah, uh, you know, Rathiyach is coming up, and, you know, I'll give it to you then. And I said, okay. So then some time passed, and then he came back, like, ten minutes. He said, oh, you know what, I, I'm just going to, I brought you something, I'll give it to you now. I said, okay. So then he gave me these uh, two, um, two DVD sets, which were those memories, <laughs> following Prabhupada, or not following Prabhupada, but memories by disciples about Prabhupada. He gave me two of those, you know, I have them. So I said, okay, thank you. And those were the ones Rodin off previous that invited me to, you know, listen, so. Um, but. You got his association. Yeah. So. Of course, it's natural to feel, oh, I should have extended myself. But, you know, we can learn from, from our experiences or from what other people's experiences. And that, yeah, we should extend ourselves. And it's like sometimes, you know, the shock of something, it develops a sense of, like, seriousness and detachment. Just like David Mrita Swami was in New Zealand, one of the temples there where he manages the temple, that one of the temples there, spends a lot of time. Uh, there was an accident right outside the temple. And the guy was a mo- on a motorcycle. And uh, he crashed, and he was literally dying out there on the street. And the devotees, they came out, and they started doing Harinam. <laughs> it's kind of interesting scene, you know, somebody, motorcycle, some devotees on, 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 came out doing Harinam. And uh, and then uh, devotees told Deva Mrita Swami about it because he wasn't there at the time. And they said, said, oh, Marj, this happened, this and that. And then, and then Deva Mrita Swami said, oh, yeah, he said, devotees will forget about it in a week. <laughs> um, in other words, the shock of death, the, s- the shock of the temporary nature of life. It's called, what do they call that? Uh, renunciation at the crematorium. Yeah, renunciation at the crematorium. So, um, 
you know, like these certain things, devotees leaving or certain things like uh, certain events like that, it, it creates a certain sense of like intensity or, or shock within the devotee community, within us. And it may, you know, inspire us to become more serious and, you know, feel more detached, which is good. Uh, <laughs> but the idea is that we, you know, we want to try to r maintain that uh, detachment as the days go on, as the weeks go on, months go on. So kind of like concrete these particular circumstances within our consciousness so we don't forget. Um and it's 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 challenging because that's the power of of maya you know like chaitanya mahaprabhu says nadanam najanam nasundarim he says all these you know women and wealth and followers and whatever it may be whatever the allurement may be they come <laughs> and then 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 i forget or then we forget then people forget the seriousness of you know life and what's so, uh, by sadhu sangha, though, like association with Bhakti Chu Swami or other devotees, we could, you know, have those more concreted in our consciousness. Uh, and one time, Bhakti Chu Swami, who is in Mauritius, and uh, was listening to some talks about him, some remembrances, and uh, my spiritual master and others speaking. Specifically, my spiritual master, he, I heard this from him, but he said that one time Bhakti Chu Swami was in Mauritius and uh, he gave an instruction to a devotee. He said, uh, the bigger position one has, uh, the bigger servant of the devotees one is. And he was relating how Bhakti Chu Swami was in that mood. And then my spiritual master was relating that to how, how that was in line with Sri the Prabhupada in terms of disciplic succession, Prabhupada's instruction. And, and, and he gave a, a pastime in which one devotee <laughs> went to Prabhupada. It might have been Mayapur, but he went to Prabhupada and he said, Prabhupada, the management is just, just, is just terrible. And, and he was complaining to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, well, if you could do better, then you, then you, you, you do it. You, know, you do better. So then the devotee left, and then he started telling all the devotees that Prabhupada made him the temple commander. And he started bossing all the devotees around. <laughs> and then, uh, then devotees, they went to Prabhupada and they said, Prabhupada, you know, this, this devotee, he, he, told, he, he told us that you said he's the temple commander. And, you know, he's like barking orders at bossing it. Like, what do we do? And then Prabhupada said, okay, call that devotee. So then that devotee came. And then, uh, and then Prabhupada told the devotee that, that, um, that he said, you become, a, uh, you become a servant of all the devotees. And he said, then you become temple commander. <laughs> He's probably told. So, you know, Bhakti Chiru Swami's instruction, you know, Prabhupada's instruction, the, you know, disciplic succession. Um, and the uh, last thing was that, yeah, many devotees have mentioned his uh, close relationship with Prabhupada. And, and this particular um, example, Specifically, my spiritual master and, uh, well, Jayadvaita Swami said it, because he, he was there in the room when, um, when this happened. And then um, my spiritual master heard it from Jayadvaita Swami, and it moved both of them. So I'll just repeat that. But Prabhupada was in his room in Vrindavan. He was laying there. It was the last days. And uh, Bhakti Tru Swami, I'm not exactly sure where he was coming from. He was coming from somewhere, but... He came into the room, and uh, and Jayadvaita Swami was there, and then, but yeah, Bhakti Chu Swami came into the room, and then he went to, he went up to Prabhupada, and he, and as far as I understand, he started um, massaging Shri the Prabhupada's head, and he was speaking in, in Bengali with Shri the Prabhupada, very sweetly in a very gentle way, and Jayadvaita Swami was hearing this, but I mean he didn't understand Bengali. But he was just appreciating Bhakti Chu Swami's, uh, you know, mood towards Sri the Prabhupada, so gentle, so sincere, so humble, speaking with him in Bengali. And Jayadvaita Swami was um, re relating that when he was experiencing this, and some days ago when he was 
given the remembrance that he's saying, oh, this is this is a real disciple. He felt this is a real, this is a really close to Srila Prabhupada. So, yeah, I mean, there's many things to meditate on and to learn. I mean, I didn't have, I mean, I saw him here a few times. I saw him in, Lo in, in Los Angeles a few times. I don't have much personal, you know, association with him. But one time he was here, my spiritual master also said this, he was here and he was actually initiating Giridhar Priya. <laughs> I was here for that. Um, he was initiating Giridhar Priya. It was kind of funny, but Giridhar Priya, he went up to say his vows. So he said, you know, Giridhar Priya said, you know, the room was packed. My spiritual master, Bhakti Chiru Swami, Giridhar Priya went up there to Bhakti Chiru Swami. And, you know, what are the four regular principles? And uh, Giridhar Priya said, the four regular principles are no illicit sex, no meat eating, no intoxication. And then Giridhar Priya said, and no more gambling. <laughs> <laughs> and all the devotees started laughing. Bhakti Chiru Swami was a little surprised. Oh, no more gambling? So, um, yeah, <laughs> no more gambling. Yeah. So then uh, later, um, my spiritual master was uh, talking with Bhakti Chiru Swami, and he was saying how, oh, Maharaj, now that you have a disciple up in Santa Barbara, now you could, now you could come and see your disciple. No, he was talking about Giridhar Priya. And then... Um, and then Bhakti Chiru Swami, uh, he said, he said, no, I, he said, I, I won't go to Santa Barbara to see my, my disciple. He said, I'll go to see Giraj Maharaj. And he, and my spiritual master said, he said it was so much like, like love and affection. It just, you know, really moved him. And uh, so, but yeah, I mean, there's so many things to learn and, and, you know, meditate on in relation to him. But you know, especially with the disciples of uh, the disciples who have you know experiencing this, I mean, it's it's a lesson for other disciples. Means other disciples of other spiritual masters. Of course, it's not a big hit uh, for uh, not a big you know punch or blow for a lot of the disciples around the world whose gurus are not Bhakti Chiru Swami. It's not a you know they're not really feeling the weight. You know, they haven't, didn't really have so much association with them, not connected with them. But there's thousands of disciples who are filling that weight. So it's a lesson that these things happen and how, you know, how to deal with it. You know, of course, Prabhupada disciples had to deal with it. But, you know, now other disciples are having to deal with it. And this time progresses more and more. And uh, in the fourth canto, I remember Bhajanarayan Swami uh, read... Yeah, you mentioned this some time ago, but in the fourth canto, there's a very nice section. The fourth canto, I think, chapter 25, text 44, 45 to 55, about when the king's out in the forest and how you know he he left his body and how the wife is there, um, and how pretty much it's saying that one should um, ra rather die than not carry out the order of the spiritual master. And anyways, it goes into a lot of detail, which I'm not going to get into now. But my spiritual master said that when Sri the Prabhupada left, he was trying to find some solace, some instructions to, to help deal with the situation. And he said he read this particular section of the Bhagavatam, and it really just answered everything. What to do, how to deal with it, how to move on. And he told disciples of Bhakti Chiru Swami, all of them, he said, um, please read this, you know, section. So, anyways, um, all right, so I'll stop there. I think Bhajanayan Swami has some pastimes. Back to true Swami Kij. Yeah.